And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a new game called Guns and Steel. This is from Modius Game Design. They've made some games I've enjoyed in the past, so I was anxious to look at this one, Guns and Steel. When I opened it up, I realized it wasn't a war game per se, but it's a civilization-style card game. Well, what does that exactly mean? It's almost like a deck building game, but you don't have a deck, it just the cards stay in your hand. It's kind of confusing, but not so much to play. Let me show you. Of the table, you're going to make a pyramid of cards. Each of these cards is going to go in a row, and once they're in that row, it doesn't matter, that's, that's randomly, you can tell which row they're in basically by the back of the card, which is also shown by an icon on the front of the card. Players are each going to have a handful of cards. They're going to start with a barter trade card, which is food on the back. They start with a reinforcement card, also food on the back, an agriculture card, which shockingly has food on the back, and then two cards that have uh, iron on the back, one of them mining, and the other a warrior, an attack card. So they're going to start with these cards in their hands. Now what you're going to do is you're going to be taking turns. And the first thing you'll do in your turn is you'll choose one of the cards from your hand and place it face down as a resource. That's a resource that you have to use. Then you will choose another card from your hand and take the action on that card. So you do that and you go on and it's the next person's turn. Uh, when you after you have the option of spending resources in front of you, so I could spend this one, which simply means flip it over. I don't get to get the ability on it, I'm just using the resource, and I can buy maybe the caravan here, which you can see cost one food over here, and I'd place that face up in front of me. If I had a food and an iron, I could have flipped both of them over, and maybe I would have bought domestication. You can buy any card which can, has nothing underneath it. So I can't buy alchemy yet, but once someone buys caravan, then alchemy can be bought even though it's going to need two horses and one iron to buy it. And then gives you another resource. At the end of your turn, if you have one or zero cards in your hand, then you pick up all the face-up cards on the table and put them in your hand. If you have any resources that are face down in front of the table, you can keep those or you can draw them into your hand. And then that's it. You go to the next person's turn. You're going to continue to do this. You're going to be trying to buy better and better cards. You also have the opportunity to buy Wonders of the World. When you buy these, they're not going to do anything for you other than give you straight victory points. Like the Hanging Gardens here gives you three victory points. Or we could play with the pyramids. Still three victory points. When you buy these, these have a prerequisite. This one here, you need to have four or more open civil cards in front of you. And civil cards have this symbol on them. Uh, if you have that requirement, you can take the card, but you also have to pay one resource of any type for each card that's still in the row that that wonder's in. So let's say all the cards are gone, then you don't have to pay anything to take that wonder of the world. And that is the way the game is going to play. You're going to keep doing these cards back and forth. Now let's talk a little bit about the cards. Many of the cards are attack cards. When you play these, there are two different things they can do. One, like this knight here, you're going to compare your attack value to everyone else's. Attack value is the little axe and spear symbol on the side of the card. This card is on many attack cards, but it's also on cards that aren't necessarily attack cards like this flanking card here. If you have more than another player, then you will make them flip two of their resources face down. Other cards can be pretty mean too, like this cannon here. You will compare your attack value to someone else, and if it's higher than other players, you can steal one of their wonders of the world from them and place it in front of you. Other cards here will give you special abilities, like many of the cards allow you to flip cards face up. So this one lets you flip one gas card, oil card up, and then one of any resource up. This engineering card down here acts as an earth, which is a wild resource. Over here for guilds, I can flip two resources, uh, I can discard any two resource cards to get a, a space card, which is a double wild. This one here lets me flip up three food and a horse. The blue cards 
Um, sometimes some of these cards, like this one here, can be played when someone attacks you. You can play these from your hand to get extra axes. Or you can, this one here, you can play this to activate an attack card and do it again. And so players are going to continue to do this, taking turns back and forth, when the top row of cards is gone, or all the Wonders of the World are gone, players will then total up the points of all the cards that they own. Wonders of the Worlds have their points printed on them. All the rest of the cards, you look at the back and it will show you how many points each card is. Every point in this row here with the bomb is worth one, the oils are twos, the earths are threes, and the spaces are four points. Most points is the winner of the game. Guns and Steel works really well, especially, I think, with two and three players. It just goes around. Now, the funny thing is, when I open up Guns and Steel, I was like, oh, man, it's a war game. Then I was like, oh, it's a civilization game. Then after a while you play it, you're like, woo, this is a mean game. So that's one thing you need to take into account here. The game is very mean. There's certainly, those, the, the attack cards are there. You have one at the beginning of the game that you can attack other players with and go after them. And flipping resource cards over is bad because you might want to build something on your turn. But even worse is stealing those wonders of the world. You should not take a wonder of the world unless you're prepared to defend it. And I'm wondering slightly, slightly if military's more powerful than other routes. That being said, I do think the game is fascinating that you have to play two cards every turn. You play a resource card face down, then you play the action card, and you're usually trying to flip other cards face down to get your resources up faster. It, there's a lot of flipping and unflipping. You'll probably have to sleeve your cards in this game. But once you're done with the cards, they come back in your hand. So like I said, it feels like a deck building game. I'm buying cards that I can use, but instead of a deck, it's a hand. It's a hand building game, I suppose. And the resources, they kind of step up and your things get cooler and more exciting as you get bigger things. You're like, oh yeah, this one lets me unflip three cards. This one lets me, this one gives me four, you know, attack symbols so that I can defend from these guys who are trying to steal my wonders of the world. And I, I really like the symbology. It's very stark. It looks very good. The symbols are easy. Even though there's uh, the Chinese and English on the cards, I still found them pretty easy to read. My only caveats for the game are one, uh, well, there's three actually, but don't let this detract you. I do like the game a lot, but one is one I already mentioned in that I think attacking might be a smidge more powerful than a more peaceful thing. Two, I wish there was more variety. All the cards in the pyramid are all the cards there are. I would have liked maybe two extra cards of each one and then you shuffle them and you're never sure what the exact combo is. Yes, the order in the pyramid itself is random, but just a little bit more variety I think would have helped the game out. And then the third is the end of the game can kind of pause for a while because you're sitting there going, Okay, if I play this card, I can unflip this, which gives me a resource for this. There's also a card that comes with the game that each player has that lets you change two of the resources. Uh, it shows you two resources that you can change into a, a, a higher resource. So when you look at that card, let me show you. Um, you can see this here. This card shows that you can turn two food into an iron, two iron into a horse, etc., etc. So at the end of the game, you're sitting there looking at this card, looking at your resources, saying, okay, if I do this, this, then this, and this. So those last couple turns can take longer. Still, though, a very solid design, very intriguing. Reminded me a little bit of maybe Innovation, the card game. Um, it reminded me a bit of... of, of a deck builder, even though it's not a deck builder, just a cool concept. And I wouldn't mind seeing this like reprint and maybe a cool or nicer edition, and I suspect that it will be at some point. But as it is, a lot of fun, especially for two players. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.